Hello and welcome to Webdev Mentors YouTube channel and you are watching the second video of the programming in Java for beginner series. So this video is about what is Java. There are a few things that you should know about Java before getting into the Java programming. And the first thing that I'd like to say is Java is a general purpose programming language like C, C++ and various other programming languages. So general purpose programming language in the sense that they can be found anywhere and everywhere pretty much. It starts from the standard desktop level programming to the enterprise level programming that you can see in high level programming systems. And Java is a simple programming language and it's very easy for you to learn. And for example, I can say that Java can be learned within eight hours or 10 hours of your hard work. Well, even though it is easy for you to learn, it takes some time to get into your brain and get settled in. So you need to actually implement it practically and keep it going. Uh, don't give some time and there are chances that you will uh, forget it. So Java is scalable and reusable. So Java scales good and they are pretty good at scaling uh, compared to other programming languages that you can find. And it's highly reusable. Uh, Java uses a packaging mechanism to make sure that you can reuse the codes that you write in another program or another package effectively. So if you're writing a program or a snippet of code, uh, you can reuse it at another point of time or another program very easily. And Java is an object-oriented programming language. So these days, uh, most of the programming languages are adapting to object-oriented programming language because of the reason that it has lots of features and factors that's very, very important these days. So Java is a very good object-oriented programming language and object-oriented programming language itself needs a good explanation. So I'll be putting another video to explain you about the object-oriented programming language. So you can also search for OOPS concepts on the internet to know about it. Well, it mainly revolves around the classes, objects, polymorphism methods, and uh, overriding of methods and various other stuff. Well, Java is similar to C. So if you know C, it's very easy for you to learn Java. It's pretty much having the same structure as you see in the C. But C has only the functions, but Java has the classes and objects. So it's pretty different, but it's good. It's easy for you to learn if you know C already. So there are also a few things that Java is misunderstood for. The first thing is Java is not JavaScript. So they're completely different. Don't confuse yourself that Java is JavaScript. They might be looking same, but they are different. Java is a programming language where JavaScript can be found in the internet, HTML along with HTML. So it's totally different. Java is developed by Sun, and uh, right now it's been owned by Oracle. JavaScript has been developed by Netscape, uh, along with uh, various other web-related components, and uh, they exist now. They're very robust, so they're useful, but they're not the same. So Java is not an operating system. Uh, well, this kind of a confusion comes up when you hear JVM, Java Virtual Machine. That doesn't have an operating system. It has a JRE, so that is the Java Runtime Environment, which comprises of JVM, that runs the components that is needed for compiling, executing the Java programs. So it's not an operating system. And uh, Java is not internet for internet alone. So they are much bigger than that, can be used in any platforms. So Java is a platform independent factor. So you can use it in any platform. Doesn't matter that you have to be in Windows or Linux or Unix based systems to execute it. It's kind of a platform independent programming language. And Java is not tiny programming language, so it's a big programming language. It has a huge set of libraries and methods and packages that you can use. It kind of uh, gives you every option that is available. So if you have a program in another programming language, I'm definitely sure that you can do that in Java as well. It's not something that uh, that is confined to some set of packages or libraries. It has a huge package, huge libraries that you can use and make it easy for you. And there are cool things about Java that you can be proud of if you learn Java. So Java is a platform independent, as I said, it can run on any platform. Unlike something like iOS applications or iOS will be running only on iOS devices like Mac, iPhones and various other stuff. And Windows applications can run only on Windows. But Java applications and Java programs can run on any platform irrespective of what operating system that you're using. All you need to do is install the JRE, the Java Runtime Environment, and voila, it's going to run your program and you can actually execute your application there. So most of the applications in Java are in JAR, so you can run them in any platform. And Java doesn't have pointers. So a lot of people in the 
uh, programming side doesn't like pointers so Java doesn't have pointers but to say clearly Java is completely uh, packed with pointers but you're not going to use it it's going to be behind what you're writing so you're writing very easy codes but Java has pointers huge pointers behind that's not going to see anywhere so you don't have to worry about pointers in here Java is free guys anything that comes with Java is free so you have the development environment, development staffs, and various software tools that is coming on internet will be free. You can find alternatives even if you have some kind of a tool that is uh, costing you. You can still find an alternative that is free for it. So there is a lot of supports and forums that is available for Java. So you can do Java development completely free with no cost. If you're having a laptop, you're having an operating system, you can install Java in that, and that's it. You can be a developer for free, of course. And Java has lots of IDs that you can use, and it starts with Eclipse, NetBeans, and various other IDs that you can use, and they have a huge collection of IDs, and it's very, very easy for you to start developing, and they're also free, of course, and uh, there's some uh, IDs, they cost you money, but you can still use the free versions there, as cool as you can find in the paid versions. And Java has loads of libraries that is available on internet. They are also third-party libraries that is also free, of course. You can see them uh, available on GitHub for free. You can download them and use it. And there's loads of libraries that makes your life very, very easy in coding. Uh, if you're thinking uh, something like uh, do this and that, there are probably chances that there is a program already there in internet for that. So it's a huge uh, set of libraries that is available for Java. And that's the end of this video. I uh, hope it was very useful for you. It's a short explanation of Java. Java is a huge uh, stuff. Uh, it's not easy for me to explain it very shortly. And the next video is going to be the requirements with Java. It's going to include what you have to actually have uh, to get going in the Java programming uh, series. It kind of covers the JDK, JRE, and IDEs that you need to have to start programming in Java. Well, thank you for watching this video, and if you have any kind of comments, suggestions, or feedbacks, please feel free to share it on the comment section of this video, or in the Facebook, or Twitter, or Google Plus fields. Well, if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, please subscribe. Uh, there's a lot of videos coming in, and you can have a huge uh, set of videos to learn. Thank you.